Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. <laughs> Jerusalem 
and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of Christ.
as human beings, we act like we're goats. At some point after our birth, we are told what will nourish us and the correct ways to speak. At some point, we take on a kind of goat culture, which is to say that we feed on things that do not nourish us, and we bleat in fear when we should roar in celebration. We align ourselves with people and powers and values that are not God's and not really ours. You see, human beings, as we usually exist in the world, are like the tiger. We're not living the way we were created to be. Too often we hate each other. Too often we hate ourselves. Too often we feed an insatiable emptiness with the empty bread of consumer goods, or we seek status or power or position over others, or we neglect the suffering people of the world in an, in an attempt to preserve our own comfort. We are not who God created us to be, which is a problem, which is the problem that Lent challenges us with. This Lenten season is about an honest accounting of the way we are living in the world and contrasts that with who we were created to be. Lent challenges us to see the way we are goats when we are supposed to be tigers. The goat is not really a goat at all. He is really a tiger, except that he does not know that he is, with the result that for the time being, he is, in a sense, not really a tiger at all. And so the problem is for us humans. In a sense, we do not know what it means to be human. And therefore, in a sense, we are not really human. Like the tiger cub, goat culture has told us that money and power and obsession with our own well-being will nourish us. But we still feel empty. We seem to know in some deep down unsettled way that we are not living the life we were born to live. Like the tiger cub, goat culture has taught us that we must be fearful. And so out of our lips come sounds of anxiety and fear and loss. And we don't know how to speak any differently. Now, if you think being Christian solves this problem, it does not. To be Christian only makes the problem worse because a Christian is one who has seen the tiger king, Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about the soulful eyed, sugar sweet, really kind Christ of the kitchen Jesus pictures we see in Christian bookstores. But the, the Christ that Frederick Beekner calls him, this explosion of a man, this explosion of life itself into life. We look at this tiger Christ. We glance up from our grazing for a moment, and there he stands, and suddenly we see what a tiger looks like, what a human being really looks like. And if we thought our goathood was a problem before, our own half-baked, cockeyed humanity, we reach the point here, if we look hard, or the contrast becomes so painful that one or the other of us simply has to go. Either we crucify the tiger king just to escape his terrible gaze, or we at least risk, risk the, the crucifixion of our own goatwood, which must go if it is to be replaced by tiger. In either case, our first cry when we see Jesus is a cry of woe. If this is what it really is to be human, then where am I? If this is true life, then what is this life that I am living? These are our Lenten questions. 
If Jesus shows us what it really is to be human, then what am I? If life in Christ is the true life, then what is this life that I'm living? The ashes placed on our faces on Ash Wednesday are a reminder of our failure to live as human beings. When we peer into our reflections with ashes on our faces, we realize we have been living as bleaching and brazen goats. But seeing Jesus, the Tiger King, truly as he is, is also a blessing. Because Jesus really was a human being. Which means that Jesus was filled with as many fears and doubts and temptations and the culture of goathood as any of us are. He really was tempted, as we are told in the Gospel reading this morning, by the goat tempter in the desert. The tempter shows Jesus the scarcity of the desert and says, go ahead, you can put yourself first instead of God. Use your God-given powers to turn stone to bread, because there's nothing up here for you to eat. But Jesus sees there is abundance. Even in the desert, Jesus knows that God has created every grain of sand and the air that he breathes. That God has given us all life. Jesus refuses the temptation, and instead of feeding himself out of scarcity, and out of that scarcity mentality, he feeds the multitudes out of abundant love. You see, to be fully human is to see the abundance that has been given to us, even when resources seem scarce. And in response, we are to express love and gratitude to the Lord our God, the giver of life, and to share that abundance with each other out of love. At St. Martin's Parish, it can feel like we live in times of scarcity. Yes, our finances are probably unsustainable, and it can feel like we are in a desert. We could focus on that scarcity, just as the tempter tells Jesus to do. But that is to ignore how God is at work in the world. On a beautiful day like this, in a springtime like this, we must breathe every breath in gratitude for all that has been given to us. We must hear with gratitude the voices of those around us today singing praises to the Lord our God. We must appreciate those who came before us and what they built and be thankful for it. Second, the tempter shows Jesus the wicked kingdoms of the world and tells Jesus to take all the power and authority over the kingdoms of the world. Surely, we must admit that Jesus would have made a great human ruler over all the kingdoms of the world. That actually doesn't sound so bad, does it? Except that ruling over others, collecting power and influence for our own interests over the interests of others, is the goat way of doing things. It has been the Christian way of doing things for far too long wanting to Christianize the nations. Jesus refuses the tempter a second time, saying that he will bow down only to God, the creator of the universe. You see, to be fully human is not to rule over others or to make the world like us, to turn native children into white Christians. Jesus, as the fully human being, shows us that we are only called to love. At St. Martin's, we can have anxiety that there aren't more people like us. We can focus on our numbers that are diminishing or how we seem less and less relevant or influential in the world. But the Tiger King is not asking us to take over the world. 
or to assume primacy of place or priority in our society. That is the tempt that the devil is giving you. Jesus knows that our mission and his mission is about loving others, and that's all. Are we about numbers or are we about love? And third, the tempter shows Jesus that he can use his power and status as God's chosen to save himself. The devil says, jump off the highest point of the temple. God will save you since you are God's chosen one. Your one life is precious and should be preserved at all costs. Fear, fear death and avoid death at all costs. Because death is the worst outcome. But Jesus replies that he will not test God by putting his life first. He will not avoid death at all costs. Because death can be a gift. The crossing guard who jumps in front of a car to save a child is giving the gift of life. Jesus knows that to be fully human is to know that your precious life is not about longevity or self-protection and the status quo. Your precious life is fully human when you give your life out of love. To be fully human is to journey towards change, toward even death, trusting, knowing that there is some unexpected new life after. To be fully human is to give love to others, even to give our life out of love for others, so that through all our actions, other persons might know the love of God. At St. Martin's, we are faced with the possibility of parish closing or merging with another parish. It feels like a death. I have heard from so many how painful that is. I've only been with you for a couple months, and it hurts me too. But if we have to close, if there is no other way, then we have the choice to make our closing a gift for others. If we have to close, how could our closing create new life somewhere else? To be a goat is to be tempted to see only scarcity amidst abundance. To be a goat is to wish more people were like us, or to wish everyone was like us, rather than to truly love others as others. To be a goat is to avoid change and to avoid death at all costs. But to see the Tiger King looking at us, to see Jesus Christ looking at us as we graze in our goat ways is a blessing because in him we see our own nobility, our true identity, the way to be fully human. And like the tiger cub, our only response is to roar in celebration. I believe in one God, Father only, maker of heaven and earth, and of all the things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, the God of the Father, for all things, God of God, light and light, very God and very God. He got him not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for 
us humans and for our salvation, came down from heaven and was in front of the Holy Ghost of the Church and was made king and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. On the third day, he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sit upon the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who stayed by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and an apostolic church. I acknowledge the baptism of the remission of sin, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. Please stand sick for you as is your custom. To the bidding, Lord, in your mercy, please respond here our prayer. Gracious God, you call us to worship today and remind us that Jesus refused the temptations in the desert. Rather than receive the glorious kingdoms of this world, he endured first the time in the wilderness and ultimately the pain and suffering of the cross. Help us during our Lenten journey to fix our eyes on him and daily to pick up our own crosses. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy God, we pray for all of our Lent activities here at St. Martin's and in our Diocese of the Westminster, and especially for all of those preparing, presiding, and assisting in our communal worship. May they all lead us together to a holy Easter and a joyful celebration of the resurrection. Holy God, we pray for your holy church. In our Sunday prayer cycle, we pray especially for the deanery of the Sea of Sky and for the Reverend Cameron Gutierrez, regional dean. We pray for Linda Adams, the president of the Coming Home Society, and for the Urban Native Youth Association. We pray for our companion parish, St. Leo the Great. Said Sedan and Saint San Luis, my Gaia in the Diocese of North Philippines. We give you thanks for the ministry of women in the church, especially as on the 8th of March is uh, what marks the International Women's Day. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, your son Jesus was offered all the kingdoms of the world and their authority and splendor if you would worship the devil rather than you. Help those who govern and rule these nations today to resist the temptation to use evil, violent, and corrupt ways to bring about their personal desires, rather than ruling with justice, mercy, and benevolence. We pray for the people of Ukraine for conscripted Russian soldiers, for war zone reporters, for the leaders of all the nations, that all your beloved might live in safety and freedom from fear. We pray for bold, adaptive leadership in the face of urgent climate change. We pray for African students in Ukraine seeking refuge and for an end to racism everywhere. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, help us during this penitential season to follow the commands of Jesus and to fast cheerfully. 
May we demonstrate the joy of our Christian faith to all our family, friends, and neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful God, friend of those in need, your Son, Jesus, can free us from our burdens and heal our bodies and spirits. We pray for those still burdened, those seeking healing, those in need within the church and the world. We pray, too, for those suffering from addiction of any kind and ask that you help them through such terrible illness and temptation. We hold up now, aloud or in silence, those, those we commit to Jesus' love and care. May we remember especially Barbara S., Jennifer S., Sarah, Peter, Chloe S., and Helen, and any others known to you. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father God, we pray for all who have died, especially those who encouraged us in our faith by their example. And we pray for them. May they in turn continue to pray for us, that we may stay true to our faith, to give love to the world. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Faithful God, you have taught us to overcome our sins by prayer, fasting, and works of mercy. When, during the coming weeks of Lent, we are discouraged by our weakness, give us confidence in your love to help us through the glories of Easter. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead to the new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought not word and deed, against thy daughter majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdemeanors. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all of this past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with heart and repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in heaven and in earth is thine. All things come to thee, and thine own happy The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things, who has bidden us by faithful people to cleanse our hearts and to prepare with joy for the possible peace, that reborn through the waters of baptism, renewed in the Eucharistic mystery, we may be more fervent in prayer and more generous in works of love. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saints. Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity 
unspeakable, O the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end.
peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.